here is we changed the policy so that the churches could feed people. And prior to that, the churches were not allowed to feed anyone. And we'd get people going to bed at 9 p.m., right? And little kids, and they were hungry. And they not only couldn't they not provide food. Hi, come on in. Do you want? Hello. Hi. Oh, they couldn't just not have provide a seat. Get comfortable. Yeah. They, they also couldn't. Um, Hello. We're sitting in a circle. I just, I just want to say. Hello. Oh my God. <laughs> How are you? Oh, great. Well, not letting go of you. <laughs> are you going to stay or just hang out or just no, say hi? I, I came to stay. Oh, good. What did you uh, I met Pat almost seven years ago oh, when I was homeless. Aww. You don't oh, have to out yourself. What's your name? For two weeks. No. David. David. You want to sit there? Yeah. You want to sit next to her? No, no, that's fine. But anyway. So. It's not only two weeks because I feel like I... Got to know you so well that Yeah, I, it was only for a short time. I was only on, I had a problem, and I finally got an apartment through the VA, mm -hmm. and it was only two weeks, so, mm -hmm. <coughs> but uh, nice to meet you. Yeah. it was very, very fortunate. Yeah. Well, well it, we were all there, but for, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, just so I have, but things were so close in life with, you know, a little bit of a medical problem or a little bit of this problem. And, and I wouldn't have a home if, uh, you know, if I, a couple things went wrong, you know, what would you do? That's part of the reason we wanted to wear the princess. Well, crowns. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're all princesses. Well, it's still coming out. It's, it's here. here. It's out. It's oh. here. It's, it's out. out. Yeah. This is sort of the launch. Yeah, um, this is our first public appearance. Okay. So it's Priscilla's picnic with the president. I brought sets of them of people that hadn't seen them before, so they could look at them. If you wanna. Um, can you get so what do they? Pardon? Can you buy them today? Sure, you would. Yeah, sure. Um, I've been waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I read the first three, and then I got yeah, yeah. 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 three. Oh, did you want to see? Well, I'm gonna hold it while we're talking. You can look I at it. I had the first three. Actually, I want to buy one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Right. Not, I'm time right now. Well, it's not authors. It's never is. Never. I could do that. If I stop feeding the animals, I'd be great. Well, yeah. <laughs> 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 I just spent fourteen hundred dollars a day. No, that's not appropriate. My friend, and that lasts till early spring. Oh, good. Well, that's good at least. I cried. Reading these books. Me too. Just so I thought it was so interesting, Pat, when I would get the books, okay, here you're going to illustrate, it'd be like one minute it's like hilarious, the next minute it's like very touching and crying. I'm like, how am I going to do this? Yeah. And she would say, I can't wait till you get yeah. to chapter. <laughs> so what are you going to do with that? <laughs> so why don't we just go around the room and say who we are, and I'm really happy to have this. Oh, I'm sorry, I already told you who I was. <laughs> Try to make it. Yeah. Um, well, you're a veteran. That's no reason. Do you know what I do no. on Veterans Day? You know, okay. I can have that. Um, Sheets gives out free sandwiches. Okay. And if you if they have a car wash, they give you a free car wash. Oh. Well, I don't. I don't go to one Sheets. I go to five. <laughs> <laughs> I get five sandwiches and two car washes. <laughs> The, the presenter. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then I either go to Applebee's or to Haas's or to Red Robin because they all offer veterans free lunch. Oh, that's nice. awesome. And cool. the only thing you have to pay for is your drink. So if you drink water, you don't, right. it's all free. That's so awesome. you're stuff. So the only, well, I eat lunch and then we go get the sandwiches and then I have I have the five sandwiches there. That's really smart. You can, and I'm a smarty pants here. I get one with lettuce and tomato, and the rest of them I get plain. Oh, so the veggies don't go bad. And it doesn't go bad. That's oh. brilliant. 
Yeah. Yeah. Five sandwiches. So this is one of the things. So not to leave Priscilla for a minute, but just to leave Priscilla for a minute. I'm sorry. <laughs> in the homeless, in the homeless, uh, and I will. I'm not supposed to do this because the launch is on. <laughs> the launch is not until Veterans Day, but this is the comic book. Oh wow! And when Jason called me and said, "Would you write a comic book with a homeless superhero?" I said, "Well, I will if he could be a veteran, because or she, because the veterans are already the superheroes of the homeless community. They're the ones who were trained, uniquely trained to." experience disaster, to have to forage for food, to be silent, to be well hidden. Um, so we made him a homeless, this, this guy super, has superpowers. Um, he's invisible. Uh, <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> but that was the thing was this sort of resourcefulness, mm -hmm. right, is what mm. veterans are uniquely trained to have for a mm -hmm. skill set. Okay. Well, of course, when you go to sheets, you can only go to one, but when it's free, yeah. go to go all around. There's plenty, there plenty of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, you could squeeze us in for cheese and wine, wine and cheese, and then go to your dinner or whatever. <laughs> We're five to seven. Oh, that's that's perfect because I'll be all that. This is lunch and okay. all, all afternoon. You know, so. <laughs> Well, yeah, so we're at the Army Heritage Education Center okay. from 5 to 7. I, I will be there. With, all, with, the, yeah. with the artists and my brother, Phil, who wrote the, yeah, who, who you met the other day, who's, uh, who, who was the mastermind of the comic. But I did make notes on this. Do you want to, let's go around the room. Let's, yes, I'm do sorry. that first. <laughs> Start with Chris. We <laughs> <laughs> like the real thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're starting with Chris. Chris Graves. Chris Graves. And Chris, uh, I am the school librarian at St. Patrick's School. Yay. Oh, you need a set of books. <laughs> you want a couple of sets? Right. And, uh, that would be awesome. I, um, I worked here for three years um, in children's services and loved it. So, yeah. That's awesome. Kids' books. We'll give you a couple of sets of books. We'll give you a, the pizza books, too, and the... Uh -huh. Elephant. Oh my God. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank Can I get to you today before you leave? Sure. Okay. I'm Sandy Luce. I'm a retired teacher, and I worked here for two years in the children's department, and I taught elementary school. Oh, that's good. She's a P. She is. She's a doctor. Yes, she is. Yeah. I never thought about that. Every time. She's mocked we're not taking any new ones. Oh, wow. It's kind of a real Priscilla. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do homeless people, I do homeless animals. Yeah. 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 They're easier, believe me. And I insisted she put more animals in all the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, after a yeah. while, I just learned my lesson that that's what she preferred to draw. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I started inventing animals for no reason. Like yeah. in, the, in the fourth book, there's a parakeet. <laughs> you know, there's no reason for it to be in there. I like I the animals. poodles yeah. and the corgi. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there are several new animals in the fourth book, so. Okay. Uh, Lonnie? I'm Lonnie. I work here. I've been working here since 2010. That's when I got hired. I'm not really a massage librarian. I just, actually, I'm a massage therapist. That's what I really did. <laughs> but I couldn't find a job at massaging when I came here. So anyway, so I work here. And I love this. My, this is my favorite job, actually. People here are so nice. They, they, they service you, they smile at you, they want to help you. They're the nicest people of all my jobs that I've had. Mm -hmm. These are the nicest people. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoy being with all the books. And because uh, there's so many books you, so many books you want to read. You know, yeah. you're coming across you, oh my God, look at that book. Look at that book. And you just get excited. Anyway, that's, that's my thing, reading books. It's, it's better than working at a liquor store, I know, because every liquor guy, oh, I want to try that. <laughs> Bonnie's on the board of the Charles Bruce Foundation that publishes the books. Okay. So, yeah. Dave, do you want to add anything? Uh, well, let's see. Um, I am a, a retired nursing home administrator. Um, I also have had my RN degree. Um, so I lived in California and downsized. That's why I came here to Carlisle. I had 
a sister that lived here, and I liked the area. I wanted to, I wanted to move to Boiling Springs. I ended up living in Carlisle. Boiling Springs is a pretty little town, but there's not as much to do. True. It just it was the aesthetics of yes. Boiling Springs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that little lake place is like that too. Mm -hmm. Children's Lake. Oh, I'm yes. always getting those confused with Mount Holly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Boiling Springs is They're pretty close. close. Yeah. They're similar, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so then I um, I'm I'm retired. Uh, I worked for Giant for three years, and then oh, went okay. to DB Shanker and worked there, and then retired. So I've been retired for four years, and I'm a happy camper. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Molly. Well, I'm Molly Shane, and I'm the development officer here at the library. I've been here about eight and a half years. And um, like Lonnie, I just really like working here. It's the longest I've worked in any place in a nonprofit for like 30 years. Um, I was curious to, to read these books as they were being donated to the library, and I'd taken the donations. I thought, hmm. And then, of course, you know, Bonnie, who, who illustrated and you know, Pat, who was the books, and the Charles Bruce Foundation has done some things with the library. So I thought, well, let's just start reading them. And, and I just got kind of hooked. And I was like, I want to know what happens next. So, so that's the word name on it. That's Thank you. Thank you. It's so I fun. I, I love the coloring. The colors. Yes. The colors. So you hold it, and you hold it, and you can. That's yeah, his little yeah. talisman in the story. And he, uh, it only works for him because he does something very special in the book for this shaman. And the shaman wants him to get safely back, because he's a medic. The shaman wants him to get safely back where he's going, but he doesn't want the U.S. to have the ability to make invisible soldiers. Mm. So it only works for him. So. Interesting, if you look on page 112 oh, of right. your book, <laughs> There's a picture of uh, the, uh, that's my uh, cross-reference to the comic book. Oh. oh. And if, if you turn the page of, it's like the Marvel it's two Universe, pages, yeah. two pages, and then we have Justice, the, and um, De Deborah yeah. sitting there, and in the background you can see a little invisible, the invisible man. Yes. <laughs> So he, he just added. Wow. And then so you know, I thought, yeah, if I could turn the page back, that, that, that was my interpretation of the same guy. I from the, originally wow. was going for uh, to meet with homeless liaisons, and then my son announced that he was moving there, so I ended up doing both. I mean, I couldn't keep track of you. I, you Thirteen thousand miles in twenty-six days. And yeah, and then you went to Maine, and then you went yeah. to Curveball, right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, it was crazy. I, my old record was 9,300 miles in 28 days, but I did have two flights in this one, so and I only drove about 10,000 miles. Mm -hmm. All right, so wait, oh. wait, pardon me? I was going to ask what the appropriateness for the invisible is. Is it an adult? It's, uh, it has curse words in it. Okay. So I would say, we, we put 13 plus on it because they're just ordinary curse words. Mm -hmm. Um... There aren't many of them. There are like four, I think, four curse words in it. But, um, yeah, I would not want someone to buy it for their 10-year-old without the kid knowing that there, there's adult language in it. Well, nowadays, a yeah. 10-year-old is yeah. pretty prolific with curse words. Uh, um, so, I, do you want to introduce yourself? Well, I think everybody <laughs> to you, Dave. <laughs> I'm Bonnie Sh Tweedy Shaw, and let's see, when Pat was looking for an illustrator for her book series, I'm like, pick me, pick me, pick me, which was kind of scary because I hadn't really done too many children in this world, and I'm like, what am I signing myself up for? It was a little bit on the scary side, so I said, you know, um, I'm going to learn a lot here, and... Um, I want to show you. It's a pleasure to meet both authors. <laughs> <laughs> when I was starting, I was just like sketching. So mm -hmm. I was trying to sketch different children's faces and try to uh, imagine the, the girl in the wheelchair, uh, not Vivian, Jillian, Jillian. <laughs> Vivian's her mother, and uh, of course Maggie. You know, and those are the kind of things that I, I 
tried to get ready for. So that when I first started doing the pictures, this was the first picture on the first one. It was a lot more primitive when I first started. And I got a little bit better or a little bit more. The kids grew up, see that was the, the one of Jillian with, that was from the beginning. And then, you know, then before long, the kids were, were much older and, well, they were only a year older, but my drawing skills were better <laughs> after the first one. So, you know, that's uh, Maggie there with her mother. And so that's... I love them in color. Yeah, I, I, it was interesting because I did all of these with uh, my... I don't even know where it is right now. My, my uh, iPad. Everything was done on the iPad, and so it's it's black and white for this because black and white's the only way to go for all these illustrations. It's mm -hmm. too expensive, but uh, yeah, the books would have been very expensive. Yeah, extremely expensive. So I figured though, when we get to print them up bigger and we do this, then why not make them colorful and fun, and then then they can do something. Oops, as I roll over and not went over. I knew I would. Um, you know, it's like yeah, what's the covers? Are? The covers are very colorful, yeah. The covers are beautiful, and I love all the reference to um, Carlisle. You know, I've had people say, oh, I know that building. That's the building at Gettysburg College. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like well, no, it does kind of look like the building at Gettysburg College. But no, it's the town hall and, you know, and the county office in, in Carlisle. So I think, and you'll see in the fourth book, there's a lot of Carlisle imagery, which is pretty fun. Um, but I, so... What happened to me was, I'm buzzkill, right? I'm always talking about homelessness. And, and they keep trying to get it to end. So I was working on this book, which is the sequel to Left Out in America, which I wrote 15 years ago, and, or 16 years ago now. And I ended up coming to Carlisle because a minister in Carlisle read the first book. And then, and then, um, so 15 years later, I had worked in the business for a long time, and I'd also been a journalist, so I, I was embedded with, uh, in New Orleans and Baton Rouge during Katrina, in the aftermath of Katrina. So I had seen mass homelessness, right? And so the book, I finished up the research on the book January, February, March of 2020. I flew home March 6th of 2020 and didn't leave my house again for a year and a half. Um, but I, so I finished up with research in uh, Paradise, at the campfire in Paradise, where 28,000 people lost their home in 80 minutes. And that's in oh, California, the, uh, right south of Los it's Angeles? Or is no, it's about 80 miles north of north. Uh, Sacramento. Okay, that's quite a bit. Uh, so it's in the Sierra Nevada mountains, which is very fortunate because Sierra Nevada Beer Company if you want to know what beer you should drink, mm -hmm. I would endorse them forever. <laughs> they are literally housing people. Mm -hmm. They're a corporate really? on the ground, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but so I was working on this book, and my grandson said to me, you should write that as a chapter book so kids like me can understand. That's a good idea. So there was this artist on Facebook that I kind of was panting after and chasing around and stuff because she was doing this crazy stuff with color. Mm. And I just pictured Priscilla as this extravagant, you know, woman who picked the trash and tied anything colorful she could find to her skirts so that she was this colorful. So I thought of this woman as the artist and I thought, so I talked to her. But she had absolutely no background in doing anything like an illustration. She just sort of threw paint and canvas and Use a lot of color. In the meantime, um, I'm on the board also of the Charles Bruce Foundation, and Ashley Kaufman had brought her story to us. You should meet an elephant, and said, "I want Bonnie Tweedy Shaw to illustrate it." And so we started working with Bonnie for this book, which is just so adorable. <laughs> and um, I'm going to give you these. Um, and uh, so Chad said to me, also we work with a lot of artists because we produce a lot of books, and Chad said to me, oh for God's sake, would you just use Bonnie? <laughs> She's so good and her work is finished when I get it. You know, he doesn't have to finish anything for her. Well, maybe a little. 
Yeah, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll take a speck of dirt off a shoe, maybe. But, um, and, you know, we produced these other books. This is just yeah. to show you. Um, Practically Perfect Pepperoni Pizza, which is the second of a series. There will be a third one, too. Hi. Um, I'm just going to give you these right now. Wonderful. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, but that book, the first, those are written by Marianne Romagnoli. And the first book sold out. Like, we might reprint them, but right now we just have zero of them, so. Hi, do you guys want to say who you are? Or? Oh, sorry. No, no Hi, worries. I'm Taylor. This is my grandma. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi. We met Bonnie a while ago here. Yes. <laughs> oh, great. And have, what, two of your books? Oh, of the Priscilla books? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, maybe we have them all now. All four done. So we met, we had Bonnie come over, we're just telling about how the book got started. So Bonnie came over for lunch, she had just finished the elephant book. Mm -hmm. So she came over for lunch and we kind of started brainstorming. And I told her what I wanted, but we also found out that we had to have black and white. And that was a little intimidating to me because I, I don't work in pictures, I work in words. And I just thought, well, if these pictures are only black and white, are they going to be compelling enough? You know? And I think Chad mentioned uh, the New Yorker cartoons, mm -hmm. you know, which are some of the most compelling <laughs> artwork. <laughs> you know, they really catch your attention. So uh, Bonnie had a bunch of ideas. It was almost exactly two years ago because we went to mm -hmm. the foundation. Well, that's right. We got a grant to do um, for my illustration work, at least half of it, um, so that. And it was like so exciting, you know, and I haven't even started yet. And I'm like, okay, great. I, I'm not sure I'll be able to do this. I was like, oh my gosh, this is intimidating almost. But uh, he, I'd get uh, a chapter or two from Pat and I'd be like, oh, okay. And then I'd read through it and read through it. And then I was like, okay, this should be illustrated and this should be illustrated. And, and it was, it was not, and I wasn't sure, like I say, my style at the beginning was more of a cartoony uh, thing, but as I grew by the fourth book, I think my drawings are a lot more realistic looking. My, my favorite illustration in the first book, so the first book, if you, you've seen the first one, the first books, the, like she created Nyland National Park, which is named after my friend Diane Nyland, right? And I guess the other thing, I have notes here, but I can't believe them. The other thing I, I wanted to do was there were stories that I had experienced working with people who were unhoused that I wanted told. And so one of the things I thought was the most creative was when I was in Providence, Rhode Island, staying with homeless folks there, folks experiencing homelessness, we are supposed to go home. Um, they stayed in the national park because there was no city or state jurisdiction there. And you could get thrown out, but you couldn't really get prosecuted for being unhoused in a national park. Okay. And these people that I stayed with in Rhode Island were so smart to have worked or circumvented this system, which you've got nowhere to live. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what are you supposed to do? Um, and you have to find a new way to a new way to survive. So I wanted to put those stories in the story. You know, so none of the stories are new. They're all a collection of real stories. Priscilla, uh, some of you may have known there was a woman who had been sleeping on a park bench down in the square for about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And I was working at the coffee shop. And the coffee shop was like my office. I'd be in there and people would come in and see me for stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. so the vice president of Orrestown Bank, one of them, I guess there's more than one, came in one day and said, why don't you do something about her? <laughs> oh, thank God I can make her a latte. What do you want me to do? <laughs> and uh, so the guys, my guys came in, because that was a great place. It's still a great place. I just don't work there anymore since the pandemic. And uh, they let us feed everybody. So we'd, we'd get in there early, and we'd make sandwiches for all the guys that were unhoused around town. And they'd come in, and we'd give them a sandwich and a coffee. Back in the park. And they said, Priscilla? I said, yeah. I didn't know her name. They said, uh, I said, Does it, don't the police hassle her? It's not illegal to sleep on a bench in, in Carlisle. It is in other places. Um, but you'll get, you'll get talked to. So these guys all get moved on, right? 
got the cops will come and talk to them and they'll move on because they're a little intimidated. I said, well, don't the cops give her a hard time? And they said, yeah, but she likes it. <laughs> <laughs> she, she feels safer when they're standing around her. Yeah. So um, I said, well, who does she think she is? The princess of the park? Mm -hmm. And that's where the title came from. Now, my Priscilla is nothing like that Priscilla. No, she's feisty, but she's very... Not, I mean, people who just absolutely love her as opposed to... Right, people really hated the other Priscilla. But Priscilla <laughs> is now adequately housed. She has an apartment. Yeah. What happened to her? Yeah. Um, but it's yeah. interesting how you pick people from that you know and have been... Um, this is when um, the, oh, her, right. the kids are being taken care of. Um, she had this woman named Stacy who helps. And she had sent me a picture of a friend named Stacy that... Uh, what, what She's now a caseworker for the VA, but she, she used to work at CARES. I know she is. So, you know, it's like I have, if I want to put a picture of that person in, then I like, get a picture and I try to use that as my reference so that I can make it look similar to the person, so that the person can look at it and say, hey, that's me. And it's a nice way to pay tribute to the people who I have watched go above and beyond to help people who are unhoused. Stacy is one of those people that... She and I, we couldn't do it last year, obviously, but she and I, um, even after we left CARES, went back every uh, Super Bowl, and we'd make a Super Bowl feast. You know, because everybody does Thanksgiving. You know, all the community organizations will think of Thanksgiving and Christmas, but they don't think of the other times when the rest of us are celebrating, right? And that was the other real message I wanted in these books was everyone in who is in the unhoused community is a part of a community. Like one of the, and it's real easy not to know this stuff because I didn't know any of it either until I started working with it. You know, like I was always amazed by how much I didn't know. I didn't know that if you were in foster care, when you aged out of foster care, no one cared if you had nowhere to go in the summer between junior and senior year of college. Right? So there's a, if you guys have gotten to the third book, there's Joey, who, uh, who's an um, unaccompanied youth. Um, so I, I learned all these things the hard way, but one of the things that people say to me often is, you know, I've seen the guys with the signs take turns. As though there's some sinister motive behind that, like maybe the guy at the giant who's got a sign, he's there till two and then someone takes over. And that's because it would be really mean for one person to hog a good corner. It's not a racket where they're trading off to each other. It's a, I need enough money to pay my hotel room tonight. I get it, and then it's your turn to be at that corner. Um, and a lot of people will say to me, I really hate their signs. Why can't you make the people with the signs go away? Or why can't you write something about them? And, I always say, you mean Walmart? Oh my God, I hate their signs. <laughs> oh, Burger King? Oh, I can't stand those Burger King signs. You know, Make them go away. <laughs> the sign you don't like is the one that says, I'm uncomfortable, I'm unhappy, I'm in trouble. And, and that's really a natural feeling because you want to say, how can I help you, uncomfortable person? How can I help you, unhappy person? How can I help you have a better day? And then you're afraid of them. <laughs> so you... So your first reaction is, make them go away, <laughs> right? Um, and just don't worry about them. They're fine. That's, I mean, they're not fine, but they're, they don't have to be your problem. The other thing that I like to re recommend for people who want to help but don't want to give money, which is a common concern, is get a bunch of $5 gift cards and keep them in your car because when you've given someone a $5 gift card, you've given them a bathroom because a restroom is, goes along with McDonald's or Burger King or Dunkin' Donuts. They can go and brush their teeth, use the restroom, and maybe they could get three trips as a paying customer out of that one gift card. So a gift card's a really good gift to give if you want to help, but you don't want to be, oh my God, I bought him heroin, right? Which, you know, that's not a discussion. <laughs> but, uh, well, it doesn't have to be drugs. It can be alcohol. It could be alcohol. but yeah. and, then, and then I always say to that, I can take you to a house and show you someone who drinks alcohol, or I can take you to a house and show you someone who uses heroin. You know, Philip Seymour Hoffman died of a heroin overdose. So the difference is that they're too poor to afford to be hidden from your
your site. And so that's the bigger difference with homelessness. But um, anyway, I'm getting off the I'm back on my, my damn soapbox. Yeah. I apologize. Um, so one of the things I wanted to talk about was commitment. This was a big commitment. Oh. Right? Not committing you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the times. <laughs> what, did, what did you think about the commitment? It was overwhelming at first because I was like, oh, can I actually get things done by the time frame? And can, can we meet, meet these time frames? And sometimes I'd have to really push myself. And sometimes I'd just have, oh, I got all the time in the world. And, but sometimes some things just flew together. You'd say something, and I'd, in a half hour I'd have that drawing done, ready for And then other times, weeks would go by, and I'm still trying to make that work. Yeah. She'd write back to me and say, what do you think should be a picture in this chapter? Yeah, because I have an God, idea I don't know. that I want to know what the author thinks is most important in this chapter. Yeah. And sometimes, Oh, here's an example. The food was the easiest to illustrate, so I would just, okay, they, they stopped for pizza or something, or they stopped for, they got something. So I love just doing little illustrations of food, and this is this is a little collage of, of some of the food that they'd have. You know, they'd have a, a hot plate when they make chili, the, the homeless kids. And, you know, so it was kind of fun, or they ate all the peanut butter and jelly at the aunt's house that she made them, th threw them out because she won the, on her toast in the morning some peanut butter and jelly and it was empty. And I'm, okay, that's what I'm realizing. Sometimes that was the easiest thing, trying to do a concept sometimes was very difficult when it was a very confusing concept that I was like, well, how am I going to do that? Or if everybody in the book was in one picture. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, not in. Yeah. <laughs> so my favorite picture, this is my probably my second favorite picture of the first book, is them, yeah. Priscilla dancing with the kids and Hugo being just angry. Yeah. Right? But my favorite picture is the skateboarder oh, yeah. who's, who's just heading, barreling for the kids, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's about to knock them all down like bowling pins. Um, and I never knew how it was going to go on the page, so it's like, yeah. I love that, that it was separated, that Chad, your husband, had separated mm -hmm. when he laid it out so that, you know, it gave it, you know, otherwise that looked like the scale was wrong, but that makes it work mm -hmm. well. Well, that was funny, yeah. too. So that's why dealing with a professional artist was such a relief for Chad, because she would send us stuff that was oriented differently from how we were expecting. Mm -hmm. So this was a horizontal picture. So we could have made it really small on one page. Yeah, or real skinny. Or yeah. Skinny. But he didn't. He just made it a centerfold kind of, and it really, it really was amazing. And I love this picture too. Did you make this one in color? Because that's one. Of um, I have not. I, I there were so many pictures. I, I was starting to print out, and print out. So it's she's like, telling you that the, the first book was less less intricate and complicated artwork, but I would I would argue that that's not true. <laughs> you know? Well, I, I just felt like I got better and got the control over it and knew where I was going to go. It wasn't where I was going to start with. You know, when I, I drew a picture of the kids, they were all in a, they, they were walking down the hallway and they all run into oh, yeah, each other. Oh, <laughs> I love that. And, that and the great. first we were like, oh, it's too late. You, you, and I'm like, you got to get that picture. <laughs> yeah, I really wanted them all smooshing in with the different looks on their faces as they <laughs> ran into each other. So you sort of answered my biggest question, but it looks like you read the book and came up with ideas for the illustrations, but she also had ideas. Exactly. And you kept feeding back and forth. I was, that's what I was wondering, who, what the illustrations were. Well, you know, in, first of all, we discussed that it was going to be like about two pictures per chapter and that's how we were like trying to figure out what kind of price you know I've got a grant what do I ask for in the grant how many pictures and how many chapters are you going to write you know what that, so that's kind of an interesting thing and um, I'm figuring four hours per illustration and sometimes that was plenty and sometimes that you know four hours per illustration wasn't even close 
So it was kind of, but it all worked out about the same. But yeah, so, um, but you would, you would sometimes just whatever, you know. Well, sometimes I would just write something so she could draw it. Oh yeah, she. Right? she so like I sent her a. I wait till you see that one. I sent her a Facebook message one night yeah. and I said, I can't wait for you to draw this. Uh, and, uh, the, uh, yes, the, 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 the Lord about that. <laughs> <laughs> the nurse in the carrot outfit. I don't know if you saw that one. Mm -hmm. yes. It was like, all right. Um, she's she's a, a real woman. Yes, that's another she's, one. Of yeah. <laughs> she's a people. nurse that works at, uh, with the elderly, and she dresses up for them. Because okay. she works a lot of Alzheimer's patients, and so she, well, she tries to that's be her really, in her yeah. little <laughs> Tinkerbell outfit. You know, it's like... She would just write something and like wait for me to <laughs> go. Oh <laughs> gosh! <laughs> but I, I, you sent her a you know, Facebook message one night, and I said, "Oh, I thought about that." So this kid's just gonna knock on somebody's door, but I thought the knocker will be a cat paw, just because she likes to draw that stuff. So th those two paragraphs are simply to give her a picture. Okay? <laughs> they have nothing to do with the book. It's, it was interesting how when you first started uh, writing, it was like I had to pull something out of each, but then later it's like she, and she it had it loaded. Yeah. <laughs> and there well, were times when that you learned to start working as a real team. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it was real important. To, mm -hmm. oh, and the, she's so easy to work with is the other thing. You oh. know, I mean, she really is. That's what Chad kept saying. So, but we also would cut pictures in half. So this was the original picture. And so Chad, and sometimes we did that because the chapter wasn't going to line up right. And that was the hardest thing because I'd never know how it, it's going to work out. Yeah. Do you need a bigger picture, a littler picture? Yeah. Do you need more pictures? close to where the word is. Yeah, exactly. The is. Sure. And then we had enough pictures in the first two books so that sometimes when we needed fill a, a picture for the second book, we went and stole it out of the earlier books and changed it. So there was one where um, Ken is a, got the twins in the back seat, mm -hmm. and we needed Ken in a later book just driving, and Chad took the twins out of the back seat. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we took the same picture, but yeah, yeah, but cool. it, it, this picture here, this this isn't exactly that she's headless in the. Uh, this is in the new newest book right now. This is Priscilla when she. I hope I'm not giving away too much, but when she was oh. with the, the little baby right there, and she's got working on a farm, and she's got all these fresh fruit. But you notice the little boy is holding on to the. Uh, scarf that she had just stuffed into her, her skirt belt. So th to me, this is where Priscilla got the idea. Here's the picture of Priscilla up here, where she wears all these uh, yeah. scarves in her, in her skirt. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm, I'm giving it my own background story. Yeah. <laughs> that the reason that she did that is because her, her little boy would hold on to the uh, little scarf, and so that makes her feel loved and, and feel like she's connected. But that's my addition. I mean, that's <laughs> so we put a flashback in the fourth book? <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the, the we're, book. we're weaving the some threads back in. Yes. Was Priscilla heavier in the first book? And she looked a little different. I think she. Well, you know, she was through. This looks like a new, new, she a new got, Priscilla to She me. got sick. She got sick, remember, in the second yeah, book? Yeah, yeah, yeah so I know that she was sick. But I I see Priscilla sitting on on her throne. Well, she, she, could, she did a little keto. This. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, she, she she had uh, living in the no bathroom. What did she have? What was her? She had a stroke. That's right, yeah. a stroke. And and I know it takes a while to come back from that. And, and you do lose weight. You do, especially when you're never sure what your food situation is going to be. Well, also I know a woman who. Many of you would recognize around town um, who is housed, but for a long time she wasn't. And one of the ways she stayed warm when she was unhoused was she would take um, uh, uh, plastic grocery bags and she would stuff them in her clothes. And she still does that, even though she's housed. So she, when you have, I have had a few opportunities to see her less than dressed. And she's very slender, mm -hmm. but when you see her around town, she looks kind of chubby because her clothes are filled with, with uh, giant bags. Huh. I have to admit, yeah. <laughs> my illustrations, 
Priscilla may change a little bit each mm -hmm. time, but yeah. in, at least each book, I thought she looked like her, her herself each yeah. book. Now maybe she looked at, like the first book might not look exactly like the last book, but within that book I tried to stick to. Well, my favorite one who changed a little is Justice. Oh, yes. <laughs> right, so Justice. Has everyone gotten through the second book? Have you read the, any of the books, uh, uh, Priscilla? Yeah. Are you asking me? Yes. I read the first one. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, so not to, tell, yeah, not to tell too much about justice, but um, so well, he's a cop. And Bonnie said, well, who does justice look like? And at yeah, that time, is he 40, is he 30, yeah. is he? At that time, Andrew Cuomo was a hero, <laughs> a hero, right? <laughs> Doing his, I said, geez, he looks just like Andrew Cuomo. Oh. Well, now Andrew Cuomo is going to jail himself, it looks like. So, um, Justice's looks have changed. <laughs> um, from the second book to the fourth book, he looks a lot less like Andrew Cuomo now. <laughs> you know, I just thought, well, he, he, you know, he's kind of that rugged, sort of Italian looking guy. Okay. That's, that's easy to go, okay. It's like, you know, it's like, it is hard to, sometimes, you were asking, I mean, what, do, what does this new character look like that you would give me? And I'm like, you know, if, the way you see it and the way I see it, what did I do that one time that was a real silly thing? You had a uh, bodyguard that was oh, yeah. uh, uh, supposed to be He was short, short, just like Danny DeVito. So this short, bodyguard looked like Danny is, DeVito. Okay. And, of course, the way I drew him was he was a tall, fit-looking young man and... Um, and I, and I read it, and the thing is, the book was going to print the next day, and we had all read it 50 times, right? And just read it over, read it over, read it over, and I look, and it's like, and I read my own writing, and I've described Danny DeVito, and there's this six foot four bodyguard, oh, no. so I didn't have time to get a hold of Bonnie, I had to change my writing. Well, what sometimes so happens... change the description of it, because that's all I had control She would over. give me an early version, and I would have already illustrated that, and then it, it kind of changed a little bit. And I don't think I was up on the... And sometimes I was reading them pretty quickly to get the idea what I wanted to do. And it's like, wait a minute, read exactly what she... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Most of the stuff I didn't change, I don't think, a lot of. I'd, I'd, I'd add things to the book. Um, I can't tell you anything about the fourth book, but um, there's a thing that happens in the fourth book, and one of the proofreaders said, oh, that would have been really cool if that had happened. And I'm like, that's true. <laughs> so I changed what happened to what the proofreader said. So, But I think my biggest problem, and I just wanted to see the time to see how long we've been talking, to see if anyone wanted... A, a water or something to eat, or a banana. I mean, bananas, how's your potassium? Everybody okay? Um, <laughs> um, I was really, I mean, I've worked on deadlines my whole life because I was a journalist, right? And I was a broadcaster, which meant your deadline was 30 seconds from now. So I was always really comfortable with them. But when I said I want to write a four part book where homelessness is, you know, exposed based on the seasons of the year, so that I could talk about how tough it was, depending on the season, to survive. And I talked to Bonnie and she said yes. I didn't have any faith that I would do it. Yeah. And I don't know why, but I thought, I wasn't really worried about being struck by lightning or having a stroke or being, you know, hit by train. But I just was afraid it wouldn't happen. And so, Book one doesn't say book one. Book two doesn't say book two. <laughs> it isn't until book three that I started to think, maybe I'm really doing this. <laughs> so in book three, we added the order in which they should be read. The big book would really mess some things up if you didn't read them in order. But you can't tell from looking at the books that they're in order. They should say book one on them, or maybe a one here on the spine. I mean, we would have been capable of doing that. I just, I just didn't have the confidence to. But yeah, like you had said about commitment, it was like, uh, boy, I, it surprised me when you'd be like, okay, I, I really need them by next week, and I'd be like, ah! <laughs> but I always it turned it in in time, didn't I? I was, always. That was. <laughs> yeah, we I we were fast. I mean, we did four books in 15 months. 
when did you start the first one again? What year? 2020. Oh, was really fast. We talked. At the start of the pandemic? Um, we started, we applied for the grant and got the grant in oh, that's November right. of 2019. And the grant's from where? Uh, it's the STEAM grant from the Pennsylvania Council of the Arts. Or oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. We, we put them, I think, in every book just to, because they had to stop giving out the grants when the pandemic happened. That's right. It's so uh, funny. Cause but the book sold so well, mm -hmm. yeah, Pennsylvania Council of the Arts, which is okay. part of the National Endowment for the Arts. Um, but these books sold so well that we could afford to pay Bonnie on our own, which was really exciting. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, good. they've gotten some great press. Ms. Magazine did a story about how, you know, it was destigmatizing homelessness. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Los Angeles Book Review did the first book. Hey, and Amazon for a little oh, while. Yeah. It was We're number two one. children's yeah. book on homelessness. <laughs> and we haven't uploaded the fourth book yet as an ebook, so I just keep forgetting to do that. So hopefully we'll go to number. It depends what day you release it, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if somebody really, uh, somebody really hot it releases the same day, you're going to stay in 27th place or whatever. But, um, but it. What I find kind of sad is that while they're very, they're very popular books for the Charles Bruce Foundation because we're so tiny, mm -hmm. and every single penny helps people. No, there's no, not a single bit of profit goes anywhere but right back into helping people and making the next book happen or making someone else's book happen. Um, but I really want, I, I mean, and I don't, they could take my name off it if it, they just would get big. <laughs> you know, so that people would understand. I was talking to Beth uh, Kempf, who runs CARES yesterday, and they did a coat drive through ABC News that they said they needed coats. And then she told me that now they have to send out a new message because they need children's coats. Mm -hmm. Because nobody thought homeless children. Everybody thought homeless adult, guy under the bridge, right? And... I just want people to know that. And then I also really want children to see themselves in a book. 1.6 million homeless school children in the United States. They need to see themselves in literature. And just like what, what uh, Sandy had said, that you work with the ch homeless pets. Yeah. Some of these homeless people are with homeless pets, and it's, it's just tearing them apart both ways. Right. And it's makes a difference if you can bring your pet someplace and that's right. one of the stories uh, that are in yeah, this sure. that I thought one of my students had a, a pit bull chow mix and they were becoming homeless and she asked me if I'd take their dog chopper so I took him I got all his medical stuff done I said call me when you get settled I'll bring him back when they got settled they called, and I took him back, and the entire family, the older brothers, everybody, was sitting there to welcome the dog back. It means so much, and that's, you know, that's, you, you think about children, you think about pets, you think about how this is just not just the old guy sleeping under the thing. This is families mm -hmm. in yeah. every sense yeah, of the word. she was eight years old. Oh. I always used to say to people who I met on the worst day of their lives, well, you got to live with 50 people, and I'll tell you right now, if you're going to pick them, you wouldn't have picked this 50, <laughs> right? <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be finding 50 lovable, not traumatized, not angry people, but every single person you're about to live with is traumatized, justifiably angry, hurt, dishonest out of self-preservation, like everything that you would have to resort to for survival. Um, and we always just had these people who had pets and then we'd have to try and solve the problem. But one guy was a veteran and he had been, a sheriff had told him he had to get out of his, it was probably like a double wide or something. And he had a cat. And we had a volunteer come from the VA three times a week to drive him back to his double wide to feed and see his cat. And 
when you think about what could I do as a volunteer, you don't think, <laughs> you know, just being there to provide that connection back to the cat. We had a family, um, they had a similar problem. Their septic tank blew up and they were told they had to leave their place. And there was a husband, a wife, and two little kids. And um, they had a dog. And they just left the dog tied up in the backyard. And they went to see the dog every day. You know, because what were they going to do? They were going to lose their dog or know the dog was in a safe place and go feed him and play with him. And, um, but I had a lot of, uh, uh, a lot, meaning more than I wished, um, of fostering situations where I get somebody in the community to take a pet. And on two occasions, the people who took the pet in refused to give it back. No, that's not fair. No, it's not fair. It's it's the hardest thing to ask somebody to do, and then it's the hardest thing to ask somebody to let go of, right? Yeah, because yeah, you get attached to them, but... Yeah, it's just a terrible bunch of problems that plague the people who are unhoused or unstably housed. You know. But so the goal with these books was to be... I think that's the other thing about having pictures in them, was it was to be, tell these terrible, ghastly stories. Yeah, so it, one of the stories is uh, um, the corgi. Another homeless family has to give up their corgi. And there's this, there's this cute, adorable corgi in the book, right? So I just thought that was really a, a very softening blow. Well, that was so fun for me. I got the draw of corgi. <laughs> but yeah, I thank you. Please put some dogs into this. Yeah. <laughs> but because yeah. telling the story 